Good afternoon and welcome to DCC Train Automation. I'm James. Um, today we're going to talk about a turntable control and our new product, the DTX. This enables us to monitor the shaft um, of the turntable underneath and enable you to position to any exit anywhere around the turntable. It's taken us a little while to achieve this. Um, you can have manual control, so there's a, a handset which you can dial in the exit address and drive to the exit in clockwise or anti-clockwise. It also has built in so the polarity switches automatically when it goes through 180 degrees. If you are using computer control, so if you use an iTrain or train controller or rock rail, the interface, there's a USB interface on the board and this enables us to have a direct interface directly into the software. Um, <clears throat> I've been using this now for the last couple of years, testing it and setting it up with iTrain, and it's very easy to set up, and we'll show you how to do that as well. So it's a full solution for turntable alignment and indexing. They don't have to be a set seven and a half degrees. Um, you can literally place your exits anywhere you like. The only limitation is you can have a maximum of 25 exits one side and 25 exits the other. So split the turntable into two, you have the two 25 each side. Um, I think that's enough for most people. Um, if you out of the box bought the, the DTX, stored in its memory, um, we send it out with set a seven and a half degree exits, but you can set them any way, any way you like, and we'll show you that shortly on this little demo uh, turntable we've got here. Um, yeah, so that's that's the basics of it. So we'll go onto the computer software now and show you how to set the exits. So the DTX turntable um, hardware can be configured within Linux, Mac, or Windows. Uh, so we've got a Windows computer here. So if we go into Windows file, and then we can open the DTX configuration software. Uh, we can have this in three different languages, Dutch, French and English, so I'll just put it in English for now. Um, this has been developed uh, with myself and my business partner in the Netherlands, Ferro Electronics. Uh, so the first thing you do is you find the COM port that the USB is plugged into, you hit connect, it then reads all the data stored on the DTX. And as you can see, it's got 48 exits stored in in the turntable so if you wanted to um, you could use these set exits um, but obviously we never know where your exits are going to be placed so we can align them anywhere we like so we'll go through that we can also set how the turntable drives um, the slowest speed it runs the maximum speed it runs um, and this will drive any motor, it doesn't have to be a stepper motor, it can just be a bog standard gearbox um, and motor. So if you're making your own turntable, these electronics will still be capable of driving your motor. Settings, so minimum speed the motor can run, maximum speed, so full volts. Um, we supply it with a 15 volt power supply. Um, it's four amps, you're not going to use that, but that's what comes with it. Um, but it's there if you need it, depending on what motors you're running. Um, then you can uh, decide um, in degrees, uh, the amount of degrees before the exit where it starts to decelerate and accelerate. So as it starts off, 50, within 15 degrees it goes from the slowest speed up to the maximum speed. We can increase this or decrease this to suit your needs. Uh, the kickstart speed. Uh, this is if you've got motors that need quite a, an amount of power to get going um, so it will give you the power for X amount of time so with the motors we've got and we supply you don't really need this you know it's so smooth with the gearbox and everything it just it gets going the frequency of the motor pulse which modulation so this is the, the frequency at which the motor runs um, it, depending on the motor you use you may need to tweak this a little bit but generally that is fine. Um, then we've got delays. So what this is, once you select the exit and you press go to start, there's a delay of two seconds, I've got it set for here, before the, the bridge starts to turn. 
Um, you can choose whatever you like here. This is this is just preferences for yourself. Once you've adjusted them, you can hit write values and it will write it to the ECU on the board and it's all set. Okay, so to set the exits, uh, we go to set exit tab and in here, um, the only things that are highlighted is the only things you can do at any one stage. So it's quite self-explanatory. Um, as you can see on the image of the turntable on the left, you've got a green side and a red side. So this defines either side or either end of the bridge. And if you look at our little demo here, I've put a green piece of paper on this end and a red. So you can see the, the two differences. Okay. So we're going to set the exits for this turntable. So the first thing you do, or the only thing you can actually click on, is set, start set exits. So now it wants to know where the green end is for our first exit. So if we come back to the, the layout here, we've got to now position this green end in line with our first exit. So I can then just use the, the buttons until it's in line. Once it's where you want it, I don't know if that's quite right, yeah, pretty good. Um, on the screen, we can then hit green save. So it saves the green end to that position. Once you press that, it spins the bridge around 180 degrees. So then we align the red end to the same exit. So whichever way the locos come onto the bridge, if you're using iTrain control or something like that, and you said in iTrain, I only want to reverse a steam engine into the, into the siding, because it knows the orientation of the bridge and the loco, it would then turn it to suit that operation. At the moment it's going quite fast, you might not want to run it at this speed when you're actually um, running um, your turntable, but for setup you can always have it going full speed for setup and then reduce the maximum speed for when it's operational. But for setup obviously this takes a little bit of time, um, especially if you had 25 exits around one side, but if you did <laughs> you'd probably have to be at 7.5 degrees anyway, so you might not even have to do this. So now we can see this is getting close to this exit. So as it comes around and stops, you'll see it's not quite in line. So all we do is we tweak it till it is in line. Then we hit the red save button. It's the only option we have. And it stores the red side. So at the moment we've got one, this is the green side. So if there was an exit opposite it, it and I hit the save, it now saves that exit the other side. So if you've got an exit on one side and you want it to be mirrored the other, you can do that. If it's slightly offset, you have to store that in as you go. So we'll show you that in a minute, because this exit happens to be halfway between these two. So we need to store this one before we store this one, because it needs to know this end of the bridge for this exit. And as, as it's turning in the configuration here, you can actually see the degrees on the screen of the position of the bridge as it's turning. So it's constantly live updating it. So now when this green end comes back round to here, what it does is it moves past the exit to the next position you could potentially start to program a next exit from. So as you'll see in a minute, it won't be a track width, it'll be, it'll be actually a lot less. So if you wanted, you could store another exit right in there. So if you had a, I don't know, a point cut off with the, the, the frog or something, you could do that degree of um, positioning. So now we're going to position this end. So the green end we're still doing, so we've got to get this in line. So it's the green end we're storing, but it's that exit we're interested in. It's not right. Okay, clockwise into it. Okay, there's a slight kink in my rail here. I need to straighten that, but that'll be good enough. Hit save, and then it will spin 180 degrees again.
So what we'll do, we'll go around and do all the other exits and we'll come back in a minute and show you once what you do once you've stored all the exits. It's just you just it's, it, you keep doing this process until every exit is stored in. Um, but we'll come back in a minute and show you when you get to the last one what happens. Okay, so we're just about to save the last position to this last exit. Um, so for a save, I'm just going to store the last, there we go, the last exit, 29, which is here. Uh, that'll be the last one. So it's just going round to confirm that. And once it's gone round, it then will give us the option, if we wanted to have another one, put another one in, but that is our last one. So we'll press done in a minute, and then it will write all of that information to the ECU on the DTX. It's got to its last position. I don't need to add any more in, so I don't need to turn the bridge. So on the right hand side it says done. So if I click done, you'll notice along the bar it's scrolling here. So this is saving all the positions into the DTX. It keeps going and it will do it does it twice. Okay, there we go. And you can see also now on the turntable it's added in all the other potential exits you could have. So these are available. So if you wanted to use seven, eight, nine, or 10, if you told it to drive to 10, then laid your track to 10, it would have stored that exit. Um, once you've stored the exits, that doesn't mean you can't um, amend them. So now we have a function here called change. In here, you can choose which exit you wish to change and adjust, adjust it and it's within the limitations of obviously the one before it or the one after it. So this does allow you to um, set a change of an exit but I'm not going to do that now, we, we'll show you that later. Um, but that's how you set the exits. That is now done. So if you wanted to change the motor speed, so if you wanted to slow, to slow down the maximum speed a bit, I'll slow it down and hit right values. Now this is in um, the configuration I want to drive the turntable. We can test it now. So on the left hand side here underneath the turntable, now we can see all the defined exits in green or red. Um, if we wanted to now um, go to an exit, we can have a target down the bottom here. So in here you can you can dial in whichever exit you want. So let's say, um, I'll just put it to one. to one. You can then choose uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise or sorry other, other way around anti-clockwise and clockwise or turn 180 degrees from this position if you hit turn it just goes 180 um, but let's go uh, let's go yeah, let's go clockwise to target one so hit start it starts it starts to accelerate now what it's going to do because we've said target one that's the green end so the green end's got to come round to this exit now, as you can see, it's going a lot slower now than when we were doing the setup. But you can tailor this to suit you, what you want. Okay? There's no right or wrong speed for a turntable. It's whatever you want. I generally have them running fast, so you get them on and off quicker. But that's me. Um, but it suits your requirements. Obviously, if you've got some kind of train control software, you don't mind how long it takes. The, the, the software will manage the trains coming on and off it. So. You might want it slow, you might want it fast. It all depends. Um, I think it's a bit slow actually, myself. So shortly you'll see it start to decelerate towards the exit. I hope. There you go. Obviously now my minimum speed isn't so much of a difference between the maximum and minimum, so you don't notice it as much. And that's stopped exactly where we want it. That is how you set up the turntable. So now you could either use the manual control, 
which some people will want. If they haven't got digital controlled layout with computer control, you can use this. This is an additional cost to the DTX. Um, it's on our website. There'll be links below uh, for you to have a look at this. Um, that that all works. As you can see, this mirrors what is in the configuration software. So we can dial in and exit, two, three, four, where you want to go. It tells you where you are. So you're at one. We want to go to four. Is there a four? Uh, yeah, but no, it's not. So we've got a five, which is this exit. So you can, or you can go 180 degrees, and again, anti-clockwise and clockwise. So we'll go clockwise, press go, and off it goes. So it's going to go to this exit. Now on my demo, these tracks are moving at the minute a little bit, so if it's not perfectly aligned, it's because I haven't um, got the tracks in the right place. That's just uh, it's pretty good. So, yep, that's that. We're going to do a little short video also on how you would implement this within iTrain to show you how easy that is to set up. All you need to remember is where the actual exits are you want to use. So on the screen you can see we have two. But actually two on this side doesn't exist. It's for the exit, the opposite side. So two is opposite side of 26. So within iTrain, we wouldn't use the two. Um, you just got to be aware of that. Um, but we'll show you that now within iTrain. And um, yeah, you'll understand it then.